Okay. Good afternoon. I'm just I just ran from from my from my other class and I need to shift gears very quickly. So um, is it okay if, if uh, you just go around and just tell me your name and kind of the area that you're interested in very quickly? Great. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Hi. Audrey. Um, I study political science and international studies in Colorado. Uh -huh. Great. I'm Nadia, and I'm studying international studies in Germany. Uh -huh. I'm Martin, I'm studying computer science. Computer science, uh huh. Uh, Hi. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. So I'm glad, I'm glad to be here and it's nice to, to see a, a group of people coming from different places and interested in, in many different things. And uh, I'm really happy to be here and I'm, I'm th uh, thanks Summer for inviting me and to talk about, uh, to talk about, about my, my book. And you know, more importantly than talking about my book, which just came out a few months ago and I'm very proud of and happy uh, to see to see out I, I really want to talk to you about uh, about the, about the process and about the project and about how you know it's it, it can be I think very misleading you know you you see this book with this beautiful cover with my name on it with the title and all that and you think okay great you know somebody just sat there and wrote a book right and 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 it came out and now you know hopefully people will read it and talk about it and review it and all that but the truth is that i'm sure you already know and you heard from people and spoke about it with summer this is a very very long process and many many people are involved in it and i just heard kind of the tail end of how much it is a part of a conversation you know so that i think there's something very misleading about a book coming like from the sky with the with a single author on it and and how how much it's it, it is a process that it's a very long process in a sense it starts sometimes you don't even know when it starts so i'm going to talk about about that a little bit about you know what was the real beginning and when i realized that i actually you know it is a project and I think it's also a process in the sense that after the book is out, it's not the end, you know, there's, there's continuation of the conversation. So that's what I really want to, to focus on. Um, and, and the other thing that I think ties into, into, uh, into that is um, a, a couple of you said that there are literary scholars are working on, on language. So, you know, I'm, I'm a literary scholar. Uh, I study I study literature and my my background and my education is very much on uh, um, on analyzing text with the tools of literary analysis and theory and do close reading all these great things that are very very important and I hope that some of you are, are doing in a very serious way and this was my this was my uh, uh, my education, and it's kind of surprising if you think about who I am as a scholar and my background, how I came to write a book about coffee houses and the role of coffee houses in modern Jewish culture in uh, Eastern Europe, Central Europe, America, and in uh, Palestine, Israel, mostly in Tel Aviv, a little bit about uh, 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 Jerusalem, that's the kind of the Middle East, but it it's really is a, a, a international, transnational, uh, and, and um, yeah, so, so, so you wouldn't think that somebody who studies literature is going to write a book about, about this topic, and actually, if you would ask me, and Omer Karam heard this already when you interviewed me, uh, if you would ask me, I don't know, nine, ten years ago, uh, oh, are you going to write a book about coffee houses? I would say, 
what? No, I mean, this is not really what I'm doing. I'm working with text, I'm working with literature, I'm working with uh, uh, analysis of, of, of text. So I think it's, it's a little bit interesting to hear of how I got to this topic and how one project led to the other, right? And, and, and sometimes you work on one thing and you don't know what the next thing is going to be. And, you know, that's kind of the, the scholarly life. It, it goes like this. There's always kind of seeds of other projects and other things that might mature and grow and, and maybe not. So, uh, uh, so, so how did it happen? So let me just tell you a little bit when I, uh, when I did, this is a decade ago, uh, uh, I did some work uh, on my previous book called The Lit Literary Passports, The Making of Modernist Hebrew Fiction in Europe. And that was more about Hebrew modernism and trying to understand how at the beginning of the 20th century uh, in Europe you have people uh, uh, Jews who were multilingual uh, with many languages, with Yiddish, with Hebrew as a kind of more religious language, how they came to write and to create uh, Hebrew modernism in European cities and when, you, when, when, you, when they moved out of their uh, uh, small towns known as shtetls, communities to the big cities and you know, where I created this, this modernism. And, you know, I started really with the kind of the tools, the regular tools of literary analysis and looking at the text and trying to see the kind of the influence of uh, German and French modernism and how they influence them and what, they, and what kind of conversation, for example, you can have between a Hebrew writer like uh, Agnon or Brenner and somebody like Franz Kafka, right? And, and, and one of the questions that, that uh, 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 interested me uh, was the, the urban setting, because I realized that going to these cities were very important, and people wrote about and represented the city. So the urban environment was, was very, very important for the creation of, of modernism. And, and one of the questions that, that, that really were really, really interesting for me and trying to, to do some research and find out where actually people were. This was like a little bit of going out of my traditional literary scholarship, right, where you're supposed to fo focus only on the text to see, you know, who the people ha are, what, what did they do. We'll talk about that in, in, in a few minutes. Uh, and, 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 and I, started to do, I started to do a little bit of a research that goes out of my traditional, the traditional way that I was educated. Uh, also tr more, of, more, of, uh, 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 more of interdisciplinary or, uh, uh, um, uh, research, uh, thinking a little bit like a cultural historian, right? And trying to see where people were, what were the places that they congregate, where did they meet other people, uh, in in other languages and and you know how how does this uh, how does this uh, uh, how, how what what do we find of these meetings and of, of these real life experiences in their writing in their fiction in a novel or in a story okay so these were the questions that I started to ask and I started to go to archives and to go to the actual cities to get to know them and walk in the streets and try to understand the neighborhoods where people lived and where they and I came again and again to this institution of the coffee house right uh, I started to collect materials about about that and honestly I didn't know what to do with it I mean, a little bit of that went into my, my first book, but I didn't really know what to do with it in, in the sense that exactly what I told you, as a literary scholar, I'm not really supposed to write about coffee houses and what happened there and the life. And, and, and uh, so I really didn't know what to do with that, but I was attracted to it. And, 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 and I found more and more. And, and honestly, in the beginning, I thought that you know, I'm just finding these materials because I love, I love going to coffee houses. I find these spaces uh, 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 fascinating. And because I love it so much, I'm, I'm finding these materials, right? Uh, um, which, is, which is true to, <laughs> to some extent, right? And, 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 and that's why I'm saying it's hard to tell where it started because one could, you know, you could argue that it really started many, many years before when I discovered coffee houses myself, right? But uh, uh, during the walk on the, my previous book, I started to collect all these materials and I kind of put them on the side. I didn't know what to do with them. 
And my thinking was that this is not academic enough. It's not the way I thought about it then, you know, and I didn't know what to do with this kind of materials and, and how to write about it, where to write about it, and, you know, should I write about it? And um, what happened was that as I was, writing my, as I was writing my book, I spoke to an editor who, uh, um, and, and told him about these materials. And uh, this was in, in, uh, uh, in Israel, in Aretz newspaper, which is a, a very good, popular newspaper, kind of like the New York Times of, of Israel. And he suggested that maybe I will write a series of articles for Aretz about different coffee houses in different cities. And I'll have some images and photographs and some quotes and really write these uh, series of articles that will be for general audience. And I thought, okay, why not? I'll take this challenge. That's a great idea. I'll do it. You know, it will enable me to take these materials that I collected and write and communicate with this kind of, of audience. And I thought that that was the end of, the, of my engagement with this, with this topic, right? I wrote about it. It's in the newspaper. It's very nice. It speaks to, to, uh, 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 to a lot of people. And then I can move on to do my next project. That's what I thought. Uh, um, but then, then, then I, I, I realized for all kinds of reasons, one of the main reasons was that many, many people read it and, and loved it and started to ask me questions and started to give me a lot of information, you know, from family members. They started sending me materials and photographs and postcards and telling me all the stories and all that. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. I'd love to get more of this information. But, you know, I'm really, I mean, that's the end of the story, right? Um, and then, and then, but then also people started telling me, okay, so you wrote about uh, cities like uh, uh, Odessa and Warsaw and Berlin and Vienna, but what about New York? What about Tel Aviv? What about Jerusalem? What about, you know, there's so much. And I said, well, what about it? I don't know anything about coffee houses in New York and how important they were. I said, oh yeah, there was this place, Cafe Royale, and, and you know, people remember it and people, and I thought, okay, you know what? That's, that's really interesting. <laughs> Maybe I should find about it. But I was still at this point, like really, you know, this is not kind of the kind of book that I want to, to, to write. And then, then I started to get uh, invitations to give lectures in conferences. There was a conference on the Viennese coffee house. And I went there, it was in London. And it actually opened my eyes because I saw scholars, sociologists, historians, you know, walking on the, and like, oh my God, you know, there's like Habermas, the public sphere, you know, it's not like I haven't heard about it before, but I really didn't make the connection, you know, that this can be, that this is a real, a very serious academic topic, but you really have to kind of go out of being a literary scholar and look at it in an in interdisciplinary way. And I, you know, and, 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 and here is my contribution that I can contribute to it and be part of a, of a conversation, you know, and this, this conference led to other conferences and other conversations it really opened a whole world for me. Okay. So, um, so very quickly, I want to talk a little bit about how, how I went and did the research, right, about it. And, and you, you, I think you can already hear how uh, I, was very, uh, I was very sensitive from the very beginning to questions of audience, right? Who, who am I talking to? Am I talking only to my peers, a few scholars who are interested in exactly what I'm interested in, or also general a, a audience, not just academics, also people in the academic world, but from other other fields. I start to be very sensitive to uh, uh, to that, uh, and how to write the book, how to do the research, right? And 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 this is this is really also the part that you know I I I I, I realized from the very beginning that it's not just me, right? I mean, there's a lot of people involved in it. From the very beginning, when people started sending me materials, right, the research already before I knew it, collecting the research and doing the research start, started in such a way. And, and, and this is, this is what, I, what I said at the very beginning, how this is a collaborative project, you know, and, and, and this is the way we do, this is the way, the way we do research, not just we are in constant conversation with other people, the people who wrote before us and the people who are 
our peers, but also people in different circles around us from different, uh, uh, from different disciplines, from different areas, right? So, uh, so I started to do research and, and doing research about a topic like this is very complicated because you, it's really all over the world. Where, the, where are the materials going to be, right? I mean, do you have to go? So if you, if you talk about, uh, if you talk about uh, uh, coffee houses in Berlin, do you have to go to Berlin? Yes, you do have to go to Berlin. I think you have to, to know the city, you have to know the places, but, you, but, but the materials themselves can be elsewhere and are elsewhere in New York, in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, because we are talking here about, about, about migration, right? We are talking about people moving from one place to another, and it's not necessarily, you know, the place that, so the, 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 so it, it, it really is a, a, a kind of a little bit of detective work where you have to follow the leads and go to different archives, different materials. A lot of the materials that, I, uh, that I'm working with came from, um, came from the press, Right, so newspapers and finding contemporary newspapers in different languages all around the world, and and it's a little bit of the case that you know once you know, once you know a little bit, then you realize how much you don't know, right? And once you know a little more, you start to make the connections, right? So uh, a lot of these materials were actually I did find quite a lot of archival materials, unpublished materials, letters of people. Right, stuff like that. But actually, a lot of the materials that I'm, 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 I'm working on, or I found, were not unpublished materials in archives, but materials that were published, for example, in newspapers. And, but people didn't really make the connection and didn't see that actually, you know, what these, once, once you start making these connections and you know that specific people went to specific places and the network that they created, you start to see the connection and you know what to look for and you find, and, and then you find materials and, you know, it's very multilingual because some of it is in Hebrew, some of it is in German, some of it is in Yiddish, some of it is in English, some of it is in Russian and Polish, which are not my languages. That was a new challenge for me to work with graduate students and with other people and work with translation and work closely with people where I can, because, you know, with a project like this, you, you go a little bit beyond the, the, the uh, uh, um, your comfort zone. And I was very hesitant to do it, but I realized it really is necessary, right? Um, so I worked, I worked with many collaborators, both graduate students here at the University of Michigan, colleagues and people from other, other places who corresponded me, with me, helped me to find materials. You know, as much as I could go to archives in New York or in Berlin or in Warsaw, and, and I visited all the places that I, I wrote about, and I did some work in, in, the, in, the, in the archives, I had to rely a lot on, 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 on other people uh, 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 who know some of the material, who will be able to help me uh, uh, to find it. And then, and then you know, once, once, you, once I started doing that then I, I also looked at the literature in a different way because suddenly I read a story about a fictional cafe with some name who may, some of these texts I actually read before and many people knew but they didn't make the connection that this is about once I started to know about what the place was like, what did it look like, what kind of activity went there, I started to read and reread these poems and stories and novels and start making the connection and realized that actually, you know, there's so much, it kind of answered one of my earlier questions, how is it that so many people wrote about coffee houses in the novels and in the stories and what's the connection there between the kind of the lived experience and the, uh, and, and, and the writing about it, right? Because that's, that's, that's one of the problems that, you know, uh, uh, these places don't exist anymore, right? They don't exist anymore. This is a classical problem of anyone who is doing, working on the history that, you know, we only have the sources. We only have people writing about it and getting, and, and we don't have access to the actual place, right? And, 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 you know, I started thinking not just about Habermas, but also about uh, theories of cultural geography and what does it mean to have real space and imagined place and how the experience of the place and how you, how you experience it it really is what makes the place the place, right? So, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the theoretical aspect, it wasn't, that's, that's, I think, also something that is important for you to, to hear and to understand, that it wasn't like, okay, you know, here's my project, what is the theory that I'm going to work with? 
you know, it's, it, it came organically, you know, it came from my questions on the kind of the sources that I work with and the, the kind of questions that I ask, what will be the useful theoretical tools that I'll be able to, uh, 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 to use, right? Um, and, 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 and then, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, uh, because then, then there was another challenge, another issue. I started to collect all kinds of materials, right? So I spoke about archival materials, I spoke about uh, newspapers uh, uh, and articles in many different uh, uh, languages, memoirs, people who write about these places, literary texts. But then I also started to collect a lot of visual materials. Right? Because the photographs, the artwork about these places, and I started to collect them and go, get really interested in them. And then I didn't know actually how I'm going to, like, you know, when I, I, writing, th this is what especially us people in the humanities are doing. We write articles and we write books, right? And, and how to combine the visual materials and the, uh, uh, and the textual materials and all these diverse kind of materials Together, that was a big challenge for me, and I didn't know how, uh, wh wh what I'm going to do. And that's what led to a dig digital humanities project, and I want to talk about it. But I want to see at this point, any questions, any comments? I don't want it to be a, a lecture or presentation. I want, I, I want to see what you, are, what you are interested in and what kind of questions you have from what you had right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's a, that's a great question. And I, I, you know, I mean, this was really the first project that I had to learn how to do it. And, and it, it, it is, it is uh, it's, it's, it's not something, I mean, for some people, for some people, they don't even think about it. I mean, honestly, I can tell you, when I wrote my dissertation, I didn't even think about this question. You know, my audience was my committee three, four people who are professors who are going to read it, and that's it, you know? Then once you start thinking about communicating, wait a second, who is the audience? Who is, who is going to read it? What, uh, what do they know? What are the assumptions, right? And then writing in the newspaper, that helped me a lot. Working with a great editor, with a very good editor, helps a lot because they tell you, okay, you know, you need to change the language. You can't use the lingo, the academic lingo, Things have to become clear, things have to write, and then, and then knowing how to write an article in an academic journal and, and, in, a, 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 and in a newspaper, it's a, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different experience, different, uh, different audience, and, and you know, I wish I could tell you, you know, what's the best way. I think, I think starting with a very clear awareness of your audience and who you, you're speaking with, that's a great start. Then how to actually do it it's, it's hard work, you know? And, and again, it's not a work that, again, it's very misleading. You see my name on the articles, you see my name on the, but you don't see all the people behind, all the editors, all the, my colleagues who uh, <laughs> I ask them for advice and to read drafts. And you know, so much goes into the production of article and books that is really collaborative in nature, right? And 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 you know, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about that. How uh, 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 people in the in the sciences, right? In the it's always a work in you know you work in a lab with a team of people, right? And and, and some of it in in uh, in uh, 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 in social in social uh, uh, sciences is is like that, where it's more common to have a team of two, three people with postdocs and, you know, and in the humanities, we don't normally work like that in collaboration, but in reality, it, it is always a collaboration. So, um, so some of it was really kind of speaking, you know, speaking in conferences to audiences who knew, some of them knew very little about the particular materials of what, what I'm doing, right? And it's a tricky thing because when you write a book or an article, sometimes you have to you have to you you, you 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 want you want a broad audience. You want people who are interested in it for whatever reason, you know, from different disciplines or not in the academic world, but also people within your discipline and within your field, you know, they they also want to read it. And so it's 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 a tricky thing. And and you know, you I think you learn it the hard way. But asking the questions of you know, who are the audience? What is important? Who do you see as people who are going to read it? And what kind of assumptions? It's also kind of how you write it and what kind of language, what goes into 
what goes into the footnotes as opposed to what goes in the actual you know article or book that's a big and 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 you know i mean i mean to tell you the truth the, i think that the, the way my book came i remember my editor told me you know um this is not a book really a popular book for for general audience you don't write it this way you could have written it this way but you don't write this way and you have to make a decision whether you want to write it this way and i said you know what I think you are right and I do want to reach a wider audience than just the people in my field but but this is not really kind of a popular book that is written where all the theory and all the historical argument and all that it's just in the in the in the footnote okay so it's 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 a matter of balance and it's a matter of kind of knowing and understanding and I think working with people like editors and colleagues who have experience with that can really help you to write in a way and and also to differentiate to to know that when you write for uh, Arts newspaper or for uh, I don't know a uh, um, you know I've written a few a few pieces for for newspapers also in 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 the United States right uh, you write you write in a, in a different way that you write for an academic journal right and and with a book like this I really try to I really try to kind of open it up to 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 different audiences yeah yeah so one, one question I had was about modernity uh -huh. and modernity in one way of thinking of modernity is a very ideologically loaded term that places European rationality and freedom at the center where Europe is really driving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. history right and I'm just wondering um, how how it was that you came because you know you qualify modernity as a yeah. And I'm wondering, how did you come to that decision as opposed to Jewish counter modernity? Mm -hmm. I mean, anything that's outside of the Christian sort of Europe right. and center right. is going to be a, a counter. And yeah. So I'm just wondering, how did you come to Jewish modernity as your, as your uh, conceptual yeah. frame? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's a very good question. The truth is that it's not just European. You know, I mean, I mean, Jewish modernity is really fascinating because it is a meeting between minority culture and majority culture, right? And there's like the story of Jewish modernity often told is a story of a minority culture that was very traditional and closed in its own way. And then one day in the Enlightenment opened itself to the world and kind of by emulating European Right? That's not, that's not the story that I'm telling. And that's, why, that's one of the reasons why the coffee house is so interesting. First of all, the coffee house, this is very relevant to, to this group and to you. You know, the, the, the origin of the coffee houses is, is, is in the Near East, right? I mean, it came from the Muslim world in the medieval, uh, early modern period. And then it came to Europe, to places like London and Oxford by immigrants and, and travelers and merchants, some, uh, 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 some Arabs and some Armenians and some Sephardic Jews who brought, who brought it, right? Uh, uh, and, then, and then, you know, you, you kind of, uh, uh, and then he moved from these places to places like Amsterdam and Venice and from there actually to, to Western Europe and to Eastern Europe and Central Europe. Right. Uh, uh, so that story by itself is a story that has to do with moving from one culture to another and all issues about Orientalism and right. Uh, uh, um, and, 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 and many Jews are very aware of it. Some of them are not. Right. I mean, when uh, you, you, you fast forward to, to Berlin of the 18th century, uh, Moses Mendelssohn, who wants to be a rabbi and then kind of is being exposed to European, uh, European uh, uh, enlightenment, uh, does it in a, in, a, in a cafe house. Right. Why does he go to the cafe house? He goes there because he keeps kosher. And the coffee house is the only place where you can actually drink and meet these people. So there's always this kind of awareness about the coffee houses coming from elsewhere. Even when it takes root in these places and becomes very much part of modernity. So I, th I think like thinking about Jewish modernity in this way, maybe in your terms of like modernity and counter modernity or the fact that Europe is not necessarily the center and actually the coffee houses is, 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 the, the, is something that comes from, from, the, from, from elsewhere into, into Europe. I think that's, that's very much part of the, of the story and that's one of the reasons why 
it's so uh, why it's so uh, fascinating. Of course, of course, when when I, when I come to the end of the book, when you have these uh, uh, European Jews, mostly European Jews, immigrating to Palestine, it becomes extremely interesting because for them the European the, the coffee house is a European institution. But then they come to Jaffa or to Jerusalem and they see the Arab coffee house and they are very confused. Some of them are aware that this is actually the, or the origin of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the institution. But these places look to them very different from the European coffee house. And, and then there's a very interesting negotiation uh, taking place there. So yeah, I hope that kind of answered the question a little bit. But yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why I found the whole topic so, uh, 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 so fascinating, that the, the institution itself is a traveling institution, right? And it became to be kind of embodying European Western modernity. But it has different origins, and it is moving also to, to other places. And it, it seemed to kind of capture very much the, uh, the, the the, the complexity of, of the whole question around Jewish modernity. Yeah, other, other questions or comments or, yeah. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your transition in understanding the theory. I know you said it was a very organic process. Yeah. Could you expand on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I can expand on it on, on, on the sense that I really don't believe in this kind of like, you know, finding a theory that you then somehow apply to the, right? I mean, I, I told you how, you know, I knew Habermas, the public sphere. So, you know, I read Habermas very, uh, 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 very, you know, very closely. And I saw how, well, actually, Habermas, it does fit, but it's also very problematic, right? It doesn't work so well. And then, like, the question of, the question of, you know, what, it, it came organically from the materials themselves, right? I found questions in the materials, right? What should, how, how should I define the experience of the coffee house, the writing about the coffee house, this problem of the fact that we don't have the, we don't have access to the place itself. We only have subjective, uh, 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 um, you know, sometimes later people remembering Right or novels writing about it. Just because people write a novel about it, that doesn't mean that that's really what happened, right? But then, then, then I came to kind of look for some some theory that will expand on kind of the nature of lived experience, and I found a, a, I found cultural geography to be very very rich. Right, and, and a lot of it was really kind of the process of me reading materials and trying to answer the question and figure it out for, for myself. Honestly, if you read the book, there isn't a lot of theory there because I didn't want to, to burden it. You know, it's there, and if you're interested, you're gonna go and read the, the actual, right? I mean, I, I don't know. We can talk about it maybe later <laughs> if, you, if you're interested, but I, 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 I'm just, uh, I'm, you know, I'm a little tired of this kind of like studying theory for the sake of theory or the whole idea of taking theory and applying it, you know. I, 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 I think that when it comes organically with questions from the materials itself, right, then, then it makes sense and if it does really help you to answer questions and to to make things more clear to yourself, then it's valuable. If you just apply, I don't know, Foucault, Derrida, whatever, you know, okay, fine, you know, it's like you click some V, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is really to, uh, 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 to make sure that you engage with it. And also, with your materials, you can, you can say something about the theory. It's fine for me to say something about Habermas and the idea of the public sphere and see the problems with the, the model when you know it comes from 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 my materials, right? So uh, uh, I think it's it's it, it, it is a process. I don't know. The, the the problem is that there are no shortcuts. You know, you can you can't really. That's why it's it's difficult to advise, give advice to students. You know, this is what you should do. You really it it, it really is a very very long and sometimes painful process where you try different things. You try one thing and it doesn't it does does work or doesn't work. You know, you come up with a formulation and sometimes you. You, uh, 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 you drop it off and you come to something a little more refined. A lot of it is also part of the collaborative project when you ask scholar, colleagues and scholars and students to read it and to give you feedback, right? Sometimes the, the fact of sending something for publication and getting, uh, 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 getting uh, uh, feedback, sometimes they tell you, you know, rewrite it, think about something and, you know, 
sometimes it's kind of annoying, right? You worked so hard on something, you think it's very good, and then you have to rewrite it. But if you take it in a way that this is all part of the process, right? It's, it, does make you, uh, it does make you think about it and to refine and find something that is more kind of works more organically with, with your materials. And the truth is that it doesn't end even after the book is published, right? I mean, it's not the last word. <laughs> the, the book is published. People write review about it and people continue to have conversation about it. And, you know, hopefully somebody will expand it and, and write on other places that I don't write, but maybe have a different approach than mine. Right? And I will learn from it and I will change my mind. So there's, there's, there's this kind of dynamics that it, it, is, it is really a process and it's very much a, a col collaborative process and it is a conversation. Right? Maybe I'll, I should say something about that um, because this is, this is for me really a first. And what you have here is actually a, 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 a work in progress. It's a website that put together. Uh, uh, put together uh, 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 materials for a digital project. So, you know, I mean, you, you belong to a different generation and maybe some of you, how many of you have been exposed to or know something about digital scholarship or digital humanities? Raise your hand if you have any. Okay, so when I, when I went to graduate school, this wasn't really anything that I learned. It wasn't part of my, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it. it. It really, as I told you, it started organically. I actually, with a colleague, I said, what am I going to do with all these images? How am I going to integrate it? You know, they're going to let me have, I don't know, 20, 30 photographs, normally for illustration purposes in the, in the book. But the visual images are really important and interesting. I have caricatures, I have photographs, I have artwork. This is also part of the experience of, of the coffee house. I didn't know what to do with it. And the maps, the mapping, right? How can you do, for people who don't know the city or do know the city, how can you see how the cities changed and what were the places, what is the relationship between this place and that place where people actually lived, the immigrant neighborhood that they were in, and then they went to the center of the city to, to go to a cafe. How am I going to convey all that? And, and it became clear to me that I need to do this uh, uh, um, uh, di digital project. And honestly, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to start to do it. What are the tools? What are the... And, and being here at the University of Michigan, I mean, we have a lot of wonderful people this, 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 this is all work in progress, so it's, you know, it's not working so well at the moment, but hopefully it will work. And then, okay. So you see, you zoom in, you see a map, you see different points in the map. There's going to be some, uh, there are going to be some, uh, um, here you can see images and places and photographs. Right. This is going to be some historical maps where you can see how the city, uh, here it's Berlin, changed between the 19th century and between the interwar period and what happened after the Holocaust when it's relevant, uh, uh, right? Um, so so um, you can do that. You can browse here by people. And this is, again, it's a work in progress, but it's using, I don't know, some like, like network analysis where you see how different people are connected to different cafes and connected all to the city and uh, uh, you know i mean once you once you click on specific people let's see if i can see a good example of that here it really is people people are working on it as we are talking here but anyway they should be should be connected here to specific people a, a page about the people and about the and, um, you know, th this enables me to do the kind of things that I couldn't do in the book, right? You could read the book from start to finish and look at the, and make the connection, but it doesn't, it doesn't lend itself, right? I mean, when you write a book, it's a narrative, and I, there is a story that I wanted to tell, but there's so many other things in the project and in the research and in the materials that I, that I found that, uh, uh, that we can do it. So the, the way... The way, the way I worked, I mean, we don't have enough time to, to tell you. Uh, I, I had to discover together with wonderful 
students that I've been working with, a graduate student in, in my field, students from the School of Information, people from the library, people from LSNAIT who know the tools, who know the, uh, uh, who know the, uh, uh, the different platforms, and a lot, a lot of time was spent on which platform to use and which, because the technology changes all the time, and once you choose something, you have to go with it, right? And I also integrated into my teaching and if you go here, browse by stories, you will see, I'll just show you one example of this kind of story map where we take a theme of women in the cafe and you kind of follow, follow a story that mixes locations, maps, text, images in a kind of guided kind of a more of a guided tool as opposed to kind of browse by city where you go and look for it by, by yourself, right? And we're still working on it. The book is out. We are still working on it. This is not, it hasn't been launched. I, I hope that we are close to be launching, but the, 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 the nature of digital project, and this is something that I find myself it's fascinating, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a lot more collaborative by nature. Right? You have to work with people who have the technical knowledge, who know very little about your field, and somehow you have to communicate with them and explain to them what you are doing. Graduate students are very important, and also undergraduate students. I integrated it into my teaching. Uh, uh, actually, the, the undergraduate students who took classes with me on this topic and also on, on other topics, they, they produced really excellent uh, 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 materials. Uh, and, 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 and it really kind of grew organically. I hired one of my undergraduate students as, you know, to do work with me because she was so good at it and she loved doing it and wanted to do, uh, uh, to do more. And, 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 and also it's, it's unlike a book that, you know, you can work on it for many, many years, but at some point it's done, right? That's it, you know? What's in the book in the book and what's in, what didn't make it in, into the book is never going to be there. The nature of, of this, uh, this kind of project, it can continue <laughs> all the time, right? I can have collaboration with other people, you know? Like people said, how come you have here Berlin and Vienna? Why don't you have Paris? Said, well, I don't have Paris because I don't work on French and I, but if you work on, pa on Paris, let's collaborate and you can add more and, you know, this can grow and grow, and this is very much something that I, I hope and I know is happening. There's somebody who wrote uh, a, a dissertation about uh, coffee houses in Cairo, uh, 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 and, 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 and you know, there's some, 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 something about the Jewish community there, and I hope that he will collaborate with me and add more material. So uh, um, the nature of, of this kind of digital work, it's fascinating. It enables you to do different kind of things, also speak to different audiences, Going back to the question of audience, who is the audience for this? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's going to be soon on the web. Anyone can look at it, right? Uh, um, so I'm, I, I'm trying to find kind of the balance here between, you know, guided people who don't know anything about the topic, people who know a lot about the topic. I mean, I can see somebody like those people who started my project who told me, oh, I'd love to find more about it because my, I remember my grandfather was telling me about this place that he went to in Odessa or in, in New York. You know, they might go to the website and go and, and discover all these, all these materials and also maybe contribute or, 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 or correct mistakes or add more materials, right? So it is kind of ongoing and there's no kind of definite date when it's, uh, when it's finished, you know? Um, which is exciting but also scary, you know? <laughs> like you have to continue working on it and somehow to... Uh, uh, so anyway, that's something that I'm very fascinated with and kind of discover uh, 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 along along the way. So, are there any questions about that or about kind of the relationship between the digital project and the book and articles? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just talking about like, I feel like in the fields of like humanities and social sciences, we're really seeing this push to kind of like digitalize and use more quantitative skills mm -hmm. um, and methods. Mm -hmm. um,
do you think that moving forward, academics working in humanities and social sciences are going to have to develop these skills, or is it going to be more utilized in the collaboration like you did on this project? That's an excellent question. I, I don't know where, the, where things are going to go in the future. I mean, honestly, I think that if, if this project, if I would do this project five, six years from now, there wouldn't be a separate book and digital project. You will be somehow all integrated. And uh, um, I mean, it's, 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 and, and, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a complicated topic. A lot, a lot of people feel like something is lost, you know, like I don't think in, I don't think, honestly, I might be wrong, but I don't think in six years or seven years from now, there'll be many, like this is going to become like a fetish object, something like from the past that, you know, people are going to like, if you, if you like to, if you like to, to have a book like this, you know, just like print on demand and things are going to, um, I don't know what I, I don't know what I feel about it. I don't know whether it's necessary for everybody. I think that, I think that, I think that, you know, when when people talk about uh, when people talk about digital humanities as something that somehow will 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 save, you know, the problems of the humanities and the fact that less people are interested in you know and less students and all that, and somehow miraculously digital humanities will solve it or save it that's that's nonsense but you know it's a tool it's a tool like other tools and like i told you this is a new tool for me it took me a long time to learn it and to understand it and i still don't fully understand it i don't know how to code i don't know i totally depend on the people you know uh, uh, um, i don't know if everybody has to do it I, I think it's still an open question i think it's a tool and i think for today honestly i think for you the people who are now students, I think it's it's really necessary to know it and to know how to walk in it because it's 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 another tool. It's the same way that we learn how to write and how to write well and how to write academically and how to use footnotes. We need to know digital mapping as a tool. You know, I mean, the next my next book, which is, which is about Yiddish in in uh, 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 in Israeli literature. I, don't, I think I'm going to need digital mapping, so it kind of it varies from one project to another, and and I think it kind of goes back to the question about the theory. There's something similar, you know. If it's organic, it makes sense, you know. When 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 I came with this question with the challenge, what am I going to do with the images and the text and the place and the maps and all that? How I'm going to integrate it? I had like. Somebody said, digital humanities. I said, well, what's digital humanities? I don't know anything about it. But that was an organic process. I had a problem. I had something that I knew I want to do. And I was looking for, for, for the tools, you know? If people are saying, oh, no, let's do digital humanities now because it's trendy or because you can get money. I don't know, in the University of Michigan, it's not so easy to get money for, for that. Uh, uh, you know, for the project, let's do it. That's artificial. That's not... Uh, so I don't think everybody is required to do it. And I don't think that's like necessarily what everybody is going to do. I think, I think it's, it's another tool. And it should really grow organically from the materials. But now that I've done it, I'm, I'm very much... Uh, I mean, I love, I love, I love this. I love the, I love the what, what the, what eventually the network analysis is going to be able to show you, right? I love how you can. I love the modality and how it's not necessarily a linear story that is told with a beginning and an end that it lets you explore it in many, many different ways. I really like it. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you about my other project, but my, my other project is a collaborative project. So the other project I'm, I'm, I'm working on right now is something that came out of this book, which often happens. You do one thing, and then you, you know, the other thing will, and, and it's a collaborative project that I do with other scholars, and that for sure will have some, you know, a collection of articles and, and, and symposium and, 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 and conference. It will have also some digital element in order to make the materials themselves more, uh, uh, accessible to, so I think it really varies by you know the the, the 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 project, the nature of the project, and the kind of questions that you ask, and what how you want to communicate with people. So we're out of time, right? Uh, we have a little bit. Uh, that's right. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 One, yeah. One, uh, yeah one 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be here for a few more minutes, OK? If anyone has any questions, want to ask me individually, I'm happy to, I'm happy to answer. And thank you very much. Thank you.